Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trofinet, the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. We're still in Mahakam after we've saved Barnabas, and we found the treasure map. And yeah, there's, a, there's already a lot that has happened. Uh, we also killed the dragon. We start to get a grip on most of the Mahakam clans to get Bruver Hoog to actually lend us aid, or at least his ear. Rode on in silence, but now, harms for the Empire. The length of her exile thus far. A scout's call tore her from her reverie. Your Grace, you must see this. With a grave mien, the soldier indicated a track in the snow. The hobnail bootprint was all too familiar. Meave had seen it before, upon Lyria's sandy tracks, and midst the ashes to which Edder had been turned. Nilfgaardian footmen. Seethed Meave. Marched through of late. Interrupted Gascon. A day, perhaps two days, passed. The scouts had learned a Nilfgaardian caravan with an armed escort had recently arrived in Mahaka. The invaders had brought with them chests brimming with gold and jewels, then exchanged these for the finest Mahakaman forged swords and spears. A scout gave me one of the coins the black clads had used for payment. Upon the coin's back, the Lyrian eagle. They pay with gold from my vault, the queen said through gritted teeth. For arms that will cut down my fighting men and subjects. We might yet pursue and hunt them down, said Reynard, a spark in his eye. And make certain Eddar he never lays hands on those weapons. Okay, so we might actually... You might, again! Increase our weaponry. ...who had been listening to their exchange. But you might also recall... We Mahakamans are neutrals who assure all guests within our borders safety. True, formally speaking, the Nilfgaardians have passed outside them, but attack them a stone's throw from our gates, and you'll see Bruver's rage come out his ears as steam, and out his arse as fire. Okay. Interesting. That makes sense, of course. If we want to keep Bruger happy, we will need to ignore the arms caravan, and otherwise... I mean, if they would have been carrying gold, I would say go ahead, but the swords, I don't think we'll be able to use all that much. We might increase a bit of damage, but I think we're doing fine on that front, and I don't want to risk our entire mission, our entire reason for being here, just because Reynard wants some revenge. So let's ignore the arms caravan. No war's outcome has been swayed by a few wagons of arms. No matter their quality, said the Queen, vaulting into her saddle. Yet if we turn Bruver against us, I dare say we shall never wrest our land from black-clad hands. The Queen's men regretted her reluctance to attack, but none tried to dissuade her. They knew her too well. Okay, do we lose morale for that? No. Okay. So I feel like that might be a decision that uh, goes... For to, straight towards Reynard's morale. And I do hope we can't lose him. At least not yet. Because I feel like Reynard is one of our stronger cards right now. Especially with the extra charges. Remember lads and lassies. Wash your beard with an herbal rinse before and after every shift. If you pass a snail on the route to the mine. You share a wee bit with him. We've seen that a few times about the snail. If a hare, dove or thrush crosses your path. Stop where you are and never ever whistle in the mine. Hoo hoo ha. Okay, again a few of the rules. This looks got okay, a wraith and a puzzle connected to it. Let's go take a look. Puzzles are fixed decks, so you can't really do anything to prepare. Spectres of the Past. That's another Barghast card. While the human kingdoms are mere hundreds of years old, the Chronicles of Mahakam stretch back millennia. Over its long history, the mountainous region has become home to many great discoveries, heroic deeds and terrible crimes. The dwarves, however, prefer to keep silent about past conflicts, instead emphasizing brotherhood above all else. Yet, the stain of shed blood on alabaster snow is difficult to truly forgive and forget, and its continued memory attracts beasts that thrive on injustice and suffering. Kill the beasts. Okay, and the beast is a bar guest. Must be a great bar guest, or something like that. The beast. Every turn on turn start, spawn four bar guests with four power. If there is a bar guest on the battlefield, gain immune. And the bar guests themselves don't have an ability. 
damage an enemy by three. Whenever an ally is destroyed, gain one charge. So the Rivian Onager first. We have two charges and we get charges whenever one of our own allies is destroyed. So that's that. Oh. Every turn on turn start spawn four bar guests with four power. So he keeps doing that. Wait, wait, wait. So if I... Use the Rivian Sapper. So set the unit's power equal to the unit on its left. So the Rivian Sapper. He's gonna be a right good levy. And I can Big use that to kill off all the bar guests. And then do four damage on the beasts. There we go. And there we go. And there we go. And oh come on, it's all it shouldn't be immune. Oh! I need to do an attack. Okay, let's try that again. So, figured it out, figured it out. So the first Arivian Sapper. Stop your yapping, kill off start those digging. four bar guests. So it stops attacking because I can't do anything else with it. It's just there to provide the power. Then I use the Onager on its right. And then the first Alchemist on its left. Using it on the Rivian Onager, boosting it to 8. Then use the second Alchemist to use it Greetings. on the Rivian Sapper. What so I destroy it? it when I actually use the Epidemic card. Which gives me 5 charges on the Onager, which is just about enough to kill the beast by doing 15 damage. Okay. Fair enough, that was it. Those gears are turning, so that's my 15th puzzle, if I'm not mistaken. Because that's a trophy for fixing, uh, solving 15 puzzles. And we did every single one of them up until now, so you get that pretty much through halfway through the game, if I'm going by the trophies, because there seem to be a trophy for each chapter. And I think there's about five, maybe even six chapters, although I think maybe there's a, a last chapter that's going to be shorter than all of these. We shan't pass this way. Oh, rain it. Whatever would we do without you? Plummet off the cliff like lemmings, no doubt. <laughs> I love this too, guys. Just bickering all along the way. I hope it won't have any lasting consequences. Of course it will. But uh, yeah, that fight between those two has been going on for way too long now. An exclamation point. Borrowed rump. So that means a story Me mission. squinted and gazed off into the distance. It seemed to her that hundreds of black patches covered the peaks on the horizon. Once she had ridden up closer, she realized these were the windows of homes carved out of solid rock. Her pride this was, sighed Gabble. Burra's Rump. A city carved out of mountain rock. Hundreds of miles of tunnels, dozens of steelworks, smithies and forges. Now, it's a vast lair to monsters. They ooze from underground, weave their nests, hatch their young, and when hunger hits them in the gut, they prowl down into the pass. Meave stood at the entrance to the underground city. The monumental gate, cast in bronze, lay on the ground, folded multiple times as a scroll of paper. Out of blackened windows oozed a stench of rotting meat and mold. The queen bent an ear to hear water dripping, and, in the distance, a metallic scraping. A sound akin to chitinous scales rubbing against rock. The soldiers await your order, Your Grace, said Reynard quietly, as if he feared he would wake the beasts asleep in the caverns. Okay. Do you recall my words as we fled Lyria? Said Neve, turning to Reynard. You swore you would retake your crown, even if you had to penetrate hell to do so. Time to follow that oath. The queen inhaled deeply and stepped forward. More shale Mars. sword raised and prepared to strike or parry. Moments later, it was swinging, fighting, as the current tenants of Borrow's Rump came out to meet her. There we go. No choices here. Just ready to take down some monsters. Once upon a time, the Fox clan mined Borrow's Rump for iron ore. When the rump's last veiny deposit was extracted, the dwarves, with their hallmark pragmatism, repurposed the spent shafts into living quarters. Little did they know that their innovative housing project would soon shelter an un anticipated class of tenants. 
destroy the monster nest. It's optional. But if I know these battles, it's probably the safest way to deal with this. We're going with an oh, army of drummers. This stench is foul. I'd like to make it known that us gnomes don't run so fast. You know, in case you were planning to skip out on the quick. Okay, Barnabas, thanks for that. Um, harpy eggs spawn a harpy every three turns. On turn start, spawn a slizzard. Damage self by 10 whenever a slizzard is destroyed. It's a slizzard nest. And every turn on turn start, destroy the lowest ally and boost a random ally by its power. Should be fine for now. So let's put down the Grey Rider. Yes. So we can start dealing with that. And use Meave to put something nice up top. I don't have a Forager just yet. So maybe let's start with... What's a good Blitz unit here? The Arbalest. Ah, damn it! They're hatching! Place is about to swarm with creepers! Does this end when we destroy the nest, by the way? Every turn on turn starts. It's the same thing as always. Yeah, increase the counter by one and damage a random enemy by two. Multiply this unit's counter by three and damage a unit by that amount. Okay. So, we have a lot of drummers, so we're gonna use Army's just that. Like and use the Grey Rider to just start moving that around. The armor should keep us safe. Though there we I go. Walk through the valley of darkness, I shall fear no evil. I do I walk through the valley left, of the shadow of right, that. I left, take a look at my right. life and realize it. Okay, yeah, let's continue doing this. Give me a time. Let's target these lizards, because I want to kill those fellas. And then the Lyrian Hashtuk, which gives another charge to adjacent units right now, right? Or just one. Life I'm hoping, yeah, it gives us an extra charge on the drummer as well, so there we go. Damage all around, but we will soon be able to do something about that. Because I think I'm going to use, yeah, Gabor's left hook in a second. So let's put the regiment drummer down. Uh, right next to the other one in case we again, pull another hush to Then play this drummer and get, ooh. It's going to start getting crowded in here. More crowded. Um, so let's put him over here. You can here. try to win them all, but you won't. Then put, use Meave to put a Forager up top. There we go. Random damage on that one Slizzard. And then use the Regiment Drummer to get that Forager out, which I can place right there now. I'm a dumbass. Yeah, not really something I can do about that. So there we go. Just take the whole finger. Okay, end the turn. There we go, they get destroyed anyway. And that was one slizzard, there we go. So 10 damage down. And more damage being dealt all around. And he spawns another harpy. Okay. I think it's time we use Gabor's left hook. Although, I might be able to... Because I can play another trinket with him, of course. So let's just focus on... The Regiment Drummer first. We get... A Sightman and an Arbalest. We'll be reaping black clad heads. There we go. Arbalest, so that on. is 1, 2, 3... 7, 8 damage. 8 damage on the Slizzard. There we go. And we lose another light infantry unit, which is good. That clears out the place a bit. And then I am going to use Gabor. Yeah, I am going to use Gabor to just play... You sure about that? The left hook. There we go. Left hook down. And then maybe that one damage on the Slizzard Nest. You can use all the damage I can get over there. So, end the turn. Interesting. So let's play Lyrian Horn first. The Lyrian Horde, there we go. Cleared out a bit of monsters. And that's just gonna keep going along. And end the turn. Yeah. 
slamming down, consume the highest unit from your graveyard and set the charge. Set the charge amount to that amount, so fair enough. I think I should probably use... Huh, interesting. Give one charge to the right, but if that's increased, I could have put it in between the footage to put a charge to both of them and then chain them completely. But, that's not the case right now. So let's just put the Hajduk over here, so I move left, right, left. Uh, the rider. Right then I can use... Hmm... One, two, just leaves Rainer over there. So I could technically give him another charge if I wanted to. I'm gonna wait. I'll see what I can do. Because I keep getting damaged, but that only helps out... Uh, Rainer I'm gonna pull out in a second. Uh, keep damaging. That's gonna be good for Rainer. I'm gonna be able to destroy the monster nest with him. Then we use the forager on these two. Although if I wait one more turn, the lay incitement is gonna be better. So same with these guys. So one, two, one, two. Yeah. You know what? I'm gonna use the forager already once. So I get him up there and then give that extra charge to the forager. Um, and play the Lyrian Blacksmith. So over here, and I can so use the Lyrian nothing. Horn again. It's exactly what I do. There we go. They got a whole bunch of harpies. And another Slizzard as well, which takes off 10 health on the nest. And then in my last turn, I'm going to use Meave to get Raynard up top. Uh, Rain, not Raynard. Egg, egg. God damn it, I've been saying rain it constantly now. Uh, so let's put Egg of the Nell up top at 45. He's uh, boosted up incredibly there. Then use the drummer to get Egg out of there. There we go. Prepare he can kill off the nest if in one go. Me. Ah, and that actually just stops it. I was going to use the footage twice to get to get an immense amount of points there, but nope, nope. They didn't want me to use that. Though wounded, Meave approached the Shailmar, which lay writhing on the ground. She then ran her sword through its heart, finishing it. Yet so spent was she that she lacked the strength to pull her blade from between the plates of the chitinous armor. The beast near took me, she whispered. It was very close. The Wolf's Bane. The Lyrians reached a vast hall that had once served the clans as their meeting room. The stone benches were covered in sticky slime and insectoid eggs, while bats of varying size hung from the crystal chandeliers. Gascon rummaged through old, weathered bones, surely hoping to find something of value. Gabor, in turn, was at a shut and locked door, grappling with it as if it were a deadly beast. The door finally gave way with a sigh, and the dwarf raised his arms in a triumphant gesture. I love the sound design in it's this a game. Room. Should hold Minos tools aplenty, he said, enthused. Some barrels of alchemical brews in here, too. Lucky there's no sign of moisture. They haven't they soaked through. All we've got to do is throw them out into the corridor and set a bit of fire to them. And woof! We'll have sealed the beasts off from the pass once and for all. Meave treated the dwarves' instructions as hallowed. Soon after, the mountains trembled from a powerful explosion. Rubble came down and blocked the tunnels. They say the plumes of smoke escaping the window openings in the rock could be seen as far as Aldersburg. There we go. So no choice there. We just set the place on fire. Look at that. But we do get a lot of stuff from these things. Ooh, that is 400 coins uh, and 200 wood for each pile there. That is a nice upgrade. That means we should be able to do something with that. And we have another letter. Singed parchment. Document found at Boros Rump. Gates barricaded. Those blasted R swipes from fire outside the window. Monsters everywhere. No way out. If anyone reads this, the Elgin Chief, he's got to be told. 
Okay. Yeah, from one of the dwarves that didn't get out. So two things I want to do. I want to increase the armory so we have the upgraded sappers to 10 uh, power and 4 damage. And the upgraded Lirian Hushdooks. So that's also great. And the Lirian Lands Connect actually is interesting. So damage an enemy and all enemies with the same power by 1. If we can get that right, that would also be pretty interesting. So let's just get that. That takes away 2,000 wood. And then I think I want to upgrade the soldiers' quarters once more. So we get 200 recruit caps. So we have a bit of space to work around in our deck. We also got Wolf's Bane draw two units and set their power to one. Which is interesting, but not something I'm going to use just yet, I think. I am going to swap out the skull for something else because I don't feel like it's all that useful. I think the direct damage is going to be more useful most of the time. And we're going to swap it out for Backer's Dark Mirror. So that's a bit of a, a multi-purpose tool. So there we go. I've added a lot of extra units. So our deck is really, really filled up right now. Which might make it hard to pull the drummers we usually need. But we'll see how it works. I also added the Pitfall Trap. Two Lyrian Lands Connects. Uh, two extra Arbalas. I removed the Sightman. Added two Rivian Sappers and the Aratusa Adept, along with three Lyrian Cavalries, which might be interesting as well. So, uh, yeah, that's the deck for now. So let's see how that works. And as you can see, I spent a lot of my wood, so I'm hoping I won't need too much of that, because otherwise it's gonna, it's gonna really hurt my, uh, my resources there. But moving on, and we get to another village, Mare's Islet. So we get a marker. Which is going to be handy for fast, for fast traveling. And let's check out Dark this place. Dark clouds hovered over the horizon and a strong gale snapped their banners. Damn it, a storm's coming. Gabor, take us to the nearest settlement. We must seek shelter. We just got Soon out of a the blizzard. Lyrians arrived in Stoolcap. The town square proved full of folk. Several dozen dwarves laden with large sacks and satchels stood about in smaller groups. When a thick snow began to fall, the dwarves cheered. Tears streamed down the cheeks of several, but Meave could not tell if they issued from some fortuitous occurrence or if the strong wind had wrung moisture from their eyes. What is it we witness? Why do they rejoice at a snowstorm? Asked Meave, pulling her hood over her head. Well, the blizzard's good cause to postpone their expedition by another day, Gabor responded. See, they've been conscripted by drawn lots to be settlers found homes in a village in Blackbrook Vale. Seven expeditions have gone that way already. The none survived longer than a year. Valley's cursed. No two ways about it. Okay, interesting. Intrigued, Meave proceeded to speak with the settler's leader. He confirmed Gabor's claim. He had buried many a previous colonist. All had been abnormally thin, pale, prematurely greyed as if some wraith had drawn the lifeblood out of them. Once the dwarf had finished his tale, he gripped the queen's hand firmly and, promising a generous reward, begged that she and her Lyrians accompany the expedition to Blackbrook Valley. Taint far, mere few leagues north along the main road. We'll make the march much easier to came with the whole army, in case of any danger. Sounds like a good plan. I know plan. not how useful our swords can be against curses and spectres, said Meave. But leave you bereft and in need I will not. We shall march with you into Blackbrook Vale and see to it that you are safely arrived. Then we will march on. The dwarf sped off to announce the good tidings to his settler brethren. By the time the blizzard had abated, they were ready to march. Are we gonna... yeah, we need to do this manually. Which is fine by me because I want to take a little break. So thank you guys and obviously for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Thronebreaker. And uh, next up we'll go to uh, Blackbrook Vale. Which sounds very ominous. So uh, thank you guys enormously for watching. And hope to see you guys in the next episode of Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. Goodbye.